So today I'm going to tell the story of this data, the uh, Elasticsearch commits on um, the Elasticsearch repository, and I'm going to use Elasticsearch to tell the story. So I'm using Kibana here um, with the data loaded, and I'm using a plugin um, that I've been developing called Sculptor, which provides a, a way of interacting with visualizations to help build queries. And if we start off by looking at all the commits over time, we can sort of see the, uh, the level of commits and how they've grown over time. We can sort of pick up little sections where there's a little spike and perhaps we can use that and drill down into our query builder uh, and narrow in on that particular point in time. And if we look at the keyword section, we might see what are significant about the messages, the commits that are happening at this time. So we have things like the Lucene 4 upgrade going on uh, at that point. So if we go back to looking at um, all of the data, uh, we might be interested in knowing who has been active um, over time on this project and who the sort of key committers are. And the popular uh, authors or commit authors are listed here. And we can pick these guys up and perhaps choose to narrow in on looking at just those guys' commits. Um, so one of the things about these, these query clauses is, um, as well as acting as a query, um, we can also pick them up and drag them into um, our visualization, our timeline visualization as swim lanes. And if we run our query now, we'll see um, day by day how many commits are being made by each of these various different um, selections that we made. I think one of the things that stands out here is um, the fact that Shy here, um, you can see changed his GitHub handle. So he was uh, known as Kimchi and then he became Shy Bannon. And you can see the cutover at this point in time. So this is often the problem with data is that it's not always uh, indexed in exactly the same way we want to analyze it and look at it. So we might consider these uh, two things to be the same entity. So one of the things we encourage with this user interface is to actually select multiple things and say, I want to group them together. And that's now essentially an OR query. So it's Kinchy or Shy Bannon. Um, and this extends beyond just you know, this visualization. I might think that's actually a useful concept that I want to reuse elsewhere. So um, when I make a selection and when I drag it, I can either drop it into a query builder here, or in this case, I've got something which is more like a, less like a clipboard. So that's a query that I can come back to and redefine and extend with extra handles and, and so on, and reuse just by dragging and dropping it elsewhere. Um, so let's, um, let's start with another query. We'll start with a brand new query and we will look at perhaps some of the different features of the product that have been developed over time. So in the early days we had a thing called facets um, and we had um, a number of commits that were talking about facets. So you can see examples of these, uh, these commits here in the commit message with people mentioning the word facets. Um, and they will have been making these commits on files in various different directories in, in the file system. So one of the things we can do is look at the directory structure and figure out where these, where these um, commits were being made. Um, and if we choose the popular directories, then everything, every commit practically at that point in time was going into modules and modules test. So these were well-traveled paths, so not just for facet related commits, but for all sorts of other commits relating to other features of Elasticsearch. So popularity is not always the interesting thing. So significance is the thing that tells us where there's high concentrations of uh, your query results. So deep down within the directory structure at this level in the hierarchy, um, there's quite a strong whiff of facet related commits. So we can see that in the mix here of green versus gray. Uh, the green represents the results or commits that contain the word facets and the gray is non-facet related commits. So we can see there's quite a high concentration there. So that's probably an interesting directory to look at. Um, so we can select that using shift select or you know, command select. And these are all good suggestions. These are all very facety type directories. Uh, whereas this one here has got a lot of gray in it, you can see that that's actually a more broad category. That's uh, org elastic search search. So this is an example of, of how you might um, iterate around an idea. So we've got something which is a directory with a high concentration of facety smells. Um, and then what we might choose to do is say, 
well, let's find out some more keywords. So if I say, well, find me commits that don't contain the word facets, but were in that directory structure, are there some other keywords that tend to get used? So yes, there's facet singular, for example. Um, so we could drop that into our query and go back um, and enable that. And then let's say, well, let's try and find some directories other than those ones where we found those high concentrations. Uh, and that will lead us to some more directories relating to facets or facet singular. So we can make these selections here. Let's just add them to our facety related concept. So we're building up a concept here um, using these various different suggestions and uh, really sort of honing our idea of uh, where all the facet related stuff is in, in the code base. Um, and this might be something that we spend a little bit of time finessing here. Um, but once we've got that concept defined, uh, we can use that um, come and come back to it. So I'll do a similar thing for aggregations, which are another feature of Elasticsearch, which largely uh, replaced facets or completely replaced facets. And we would refer to these often as ags, or because we're saying the word aggregation is quite tedious. Um, and this is where we find high concentrations of commits with the word ags in there. So we can see ags changed all these various different uh, commits here. And the directories where we find high concentrations of that are listed here. So again, I'll go through and pick out some of these uh, these directory structures here. Um, and let's drop those into the query builder there. Let's do that little trick again, see if we can come up with some other keywords. So what words other than the word ags are strongly associated? Well, here we are, aggregation, aggregations. Um, significant is significant. That's the actual tool that we're using to uh, to calculate and define these keywords here. That's the significant aggregation at work there. So um, let's enable that stuff again. Let's try and find some other directories with high concentrations of this kind of stuff in it. Um, and we've got some more candidates here. Aggregations, aggregations. So anybody who's working in these directories is pretty much working on aggregation related stuff. So let's flip that round, delete that. Here's a bunch of directories where if you're working in there, you're working on aggregations. Um, so just, yeah, so that's an example. So let's use these two concepts together. So let's take a new query um, and let's give it a name. Let's call it facets to ags. So it's gonna tell the story of how we moved from facets to aggregations. Um, and we'll drop in there as a query facets or ags. So these directories, um, we're interested in when these things were having commits thrown into them. And we get some sort of timeline here. Um, we can actually throw the facets and ags as concepts into a, sw a swim lane. Um, and then we can see, for example, a lot of facety related commits going on uh, during this time period. And then there was this sort of transition period where there were some commits that were adding ags. And at the same time, they might have also been removing um, or updating the equivalent facet. And then there became a sort of cutover point where we stopped talking about facets and we were exclusively building aggregations. So the next question is, um, who might have been involved in doing this stuff? So if we flip over to authors, um, we're showing here the popular authors. So we've got people like uh, Ryan, and Sh uh, Ryan Ernst in there. He's a sort of super productive guy working across all sorts of areas in the code base, changing things around, uh, but not exclusively tied to um, aggregation related commits. So he might have been doing something with, I don't know, serialization or something that happened to touch on aggregations. So if we look at the significant um, uh, committers uh, relating to these directory structures, you get a sort of slightly different emphasis or mix. Um, you get people who have a lot of green in their list of uh, commits, so they're almost exclusively associated with ag-related work. So I'm not going to bother putting these into the uh, the query builder. I think I'll just drop them straight into the timeline here um, as swim lane items, um, and then we can start to have a look at who was involved in in these various different things. So again, we can we can highlight a selection of time, and then we can see that. Um, Shy was busy working away on facets here during this time period. Um, as we roll time forward, um, there's still um, Martine working away on facets at this point. 
uh, I'm probably struggling at this stage because we realize the limitations of facets. Uh, and that's when Uri, Uri Benas, uh, started thinking about aggregations. So we haven't got the directory structures appearing just yet. Um, but here's where we find the first commits into the AGS related part of the structure. Uh, we've got Adrian, um, I committed a geo hash grid, I think was the first aggregation I ever did. And we've got Zach coming in as well, working on aggregations. And then Colin, uh, he's just been an absolute machine working his way through lots of ag related stuff. So you can, for example, pick up individuals uh, and again, drag and drop them into the query builder, uh, run a query, and focus in on those guys, look at their commits, uh, look at the significant keywords. So Zachary added moving, moving averages and these kinds of things. That's uh, an area that he was busy working on during this time period. So hopefully that gives um, a good indication of um, how you can build up complex queries like facets and ags um, using uh, suggestions based on where we see high concentrations of signal and how you can create concepts which might uh, be reusable either in visualizations or in query builders which are sort of complex objects which consist of you know, multiple phrases and terms and so on. Uh, and overall it's just um, for my own personal view, it's a, it's a nice way of working your way around data um, and being quite productive um, exploring the data.